Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com uh, nightly wrap-up show. Hope everybody is uh, doing well. Kindly take a moment, uh, support the channel, support your boy. Uh, click a like. If you like what we're doing, if you like the content and all that good stuff, uh, just click a like, take you a second, share, subscribe if you haven't come along so far. And hopefully, uh, again, we'll continue uh, to provide value. So uh, weekend update, we talked about uh, the importance of the five-day moving average. Again, all you have to do is go back to uh, the weekend video, we talked about if the Qs will start losing uh, this 485, 50, 485 level, uh, it's going to provide a little bit of a back test to the 10 day moving average. That's pretty much exactly what happened today. Um, the catalyst for, for the little bit of a aggressive selling uh, towards the middle of the day was uh, more comments from Jerome Powell. Really didn't say anything, right? He, he literally really didn't say anything. He kind of basically just reaffirmed what he's been saying. Uh, all along, but you know, again, he had a big aggressive swan dive, right? He had a big aggressive swan dive, uh, took out the five day moving average, uh, had a you know, pretty violent move uh, towards the end of the day. It stopped right at the 10 day moving average. Again, that's the whole point of knowing where stocks go from supply to supply, and in this case, from the five day to the 10 day moving average. That's the whole point. So, again, when you when new traders turn around and say, Well, why do you have all these? All these unnecessary lines are not unnecessary. That's the whole point. They're telling you where the areas of support are and where the next measure potential are. And you can see it stopped perfectly from the five day and to the 10 day. So yesterday, for example, you had a, you had a very, very important level of 485, uh, 50, 485. And now, you know, you have a next level of importance, which is roughly around the 483. But to, to the bull's credit, and this is exactly what we've been seeing now for a while since uh, we reclaimed back. Uh, the 50-day moving average on September the 2nd, the, these channels are being defended. That's the whole point. Stocks, even if they're losing uh, those channels in the middle of the day, they are being defended. That's exactly what you saw today. Uh, once uh, pretty much Powell stopped speaking, look at the violence. Look at the violent move down, right? And look at the violent move up uh, in the last half hour, 45 minutes of the day. And now uh, the bulls not only held the 10-day moving average, they reclaimed back the five-day uh, that they lost that we talked about on the weekend video. And that's kind of where we are. Okay. Uh, you know, we're kind of where we are. The majority of the day, you kind of had one of those dynamic res days for the majority of uh, names. You had a lot of names that were continuing uh, to fade, right? A lot of the semiconductors names still from last week, uh, start continue to see a little bit of softness. I don't want to say weakness because a lot of them are still way above uh, their channels, but you started seeing a lot of softness uh, towards the middle of last week, towards uh, the start of this week uh, as well. But the overall spectrum, the overall dynamics is fine. And my, like my mom says, no news is good news. And that's exactly uh, how the market played out. Uh, majority of the day, we were pretty much flat to down. And towards the end, uh, after j Powell uh, stopped speaking, we had a pretty aggressive six spike. I mean, this is pretty aggressive, right? You know, the Qs went uh, from three, uh, from 83 uh, all the way back to uh, 87. Again, that's a big, big spike. I was already gone for the day. I hit the gym, relaxed, kind of reset my mind. But overall, uh, the market continues to do what the market continues to do in a very, very organic, uh, good, um, good value tape. It continues to be bought on dips. It continues to to be very, very constructive at bounce spots where they're supposed to bounce. And this is where you know you see a lot of, you know, especially new traders or a lot of. Uh, bias traders in one direction, they get caught. They feel like every single reversal is going to be uh, the end of the world. And they think every single uh, move to the upside is going to be quote unquote to the move. And it doesn't work that way. It just, everything works in cycles. Everything has its uh, his nuances. They're moving parts. And depending what you're in, right? Depending what you're in, money flow could be out of your name, even though how much you love it and you can't you know, live without it. And it could be rotated into other things. So let's talk about uh, individual names, right? Again, you don't need to break down today with, with a fine tooth comb. You kind of see, uh, you kind of see that there was a lot of weakness, right? A lot of weakness, a lot of softness, and then we started firming up and started moving higher. So let's talk about uh, the pivots for today, right? Wasn't a lot, right? Wasn't a lot, but the point is, the ones that went, 
they did what they had to do. So um, Oracle, right? Upgraded pre-market. Ironically, the initial move on Oracle, it didn't confirm 170, per, you know, at the uh, at the open or anywhere in their first part of the day. It confirmed it after uh, after like 2:30. So upgraded needs to confirm the 170 pre-market highs again. Not a big move yet, uh, but again, ultimately they had to clean up a seller pretty much the whole day. They finally cleaned them up. They took out the 170. Uh, and pretty much closed at the highs. Oracle looks pretty good. It looks pretty good. Let's see if it uh, starts testing the highs. I don't have a position in this thing. It's just something that I've been kind of monitoring uh, a little bit too thin for me, even though it's trading 10 million shares, a little bit too thin. I need, I need something with a little bit more meat on the bones, but uh, beautiful looking chart. If you are along, this thing does look uh, higher. Uh, Microsoft gave a move to the downside earlier, uh, 426 if it builds below can flush. Again, not a big move, but uh, it is what it is. We came in long uh, Tesla from uh, the balance from Friday, right? The balance from Friday was that 254 five day remount. Um, you know, it, it it took out 61.75, uh, traded up to uh, 65. Beautiful move, absolutely beautiful move. Uh, and then we caught a, another balance on this thing. I'll get to that in a second. And Google, this is definitely one of the nicer looking charts out there uh, in the beta space. Right in the mega cap space, we, we we're seeing recent uh, short term 170 calls being bought up. This is now the first close off the 50 day moving average. See that, guys? This is literally the first close off the 50. Let's watch this thing, right? Let's definitely watch this thing for the next uh, day or so because if it could start confirming today's channel, you know, we could see a move move back up to this 170. Re remember, this is one of the very few names. Uh, that that were below the 50-day moving average until today's close. You can see the last time uh, it had any type of price discovery at the 50, that's when it lost it on July the 18th. Again, this is the opposite effect. So when it lost it on July the 18th, uh, Google went from uh, 170, 176, and it went all the way down to 147, right? Now, flip that around. Now, this is the first time it reclaimed the 50-day moving average. So let's see... Uh, if it could confirm it tomorrow and start working its way back uh, to the 168 and 170 level. So it's very, very nice looking chart uh, going in for tomorrow. And just like Friday, right? Just like Friday, guys, uh, you know, we saw, uh, we talked about another bounce, right? Another bounce on on Tesla. That's, that's what's working. You know, when you have a big uptrend in stocks and they come back into the five-day moving average, as long as the five-day holds, you got to get long there. And we got long again. I mean, the second day in a row, uh, 5680, 257, five day uh, potential bounce. And I mean, a beautiful bounce. You know, the thing, first of all, closed at the high of the day. But this, you know, this, by the time, you know, the time when I, when I was uh, tweeting this out on, on the feed, I go, look, second day in a row, big bounce, right? Big, big bounce. Again, you know, Friday, we saw uh, nearly from, from Friday to today, nearly a 10 point bounce. And today, we saw another five point bounce on Tesla. So that's, that's working very, very well. And Nvidia, right? Nvidia, it didn't make the price action yet that we wanted. Because if you get, if you, here's my notes, uh, it's not really a major level, but 121.45 got rejected twice as a sneaky area in the 16 minute chart. Uh, it's basically red to green. It still needs to reclaim the 122 five day, but I like the setup. And the reason why I like the setup, I think Nvidia could be a day or two away. It's nothing imminent. Again, keep this in mind. It's nothing imminent, but the first step Nvidia needs to do is reclaim back this orange line, which is the five-day moving average. That's very, very important. The reason why um, I'm, I'm kind of talking about NVIDIA now is we did see, and again, I don't think it's going to be the same dynamic as we saw last week before uh, you know, before you saw that news that the CEO, at least for now, start, stopped selling stock. But we started seeing again, you know, 122, 123, 125 weeklies. Again, it, it, we started seeing that in the early part of last week, and there was this major PR that really skyrocketed the stock. So we definitely want to keep an eye on uh, NVIDIA in the next uh, couple of days. Some other names we should keep an eye on. Guys, look at Donald J. Trump. You didn't think I was going to start with that one, did you? But look at the stock. So you're going to notice a lot of similarities here, right? Every single time it gets to the supply zone here, the stock gets rejected. You see that? This is the last time it got here. It's the 20-day supply. It got rejected and today got rejected again. Keep an eye on this thing, all right? It's not really a name that I'm interested in before. You guys, I saw this chart and I said, mm, it could be interesting. Keep an eye on this thing. If this thing tomorrow reclaims back the 20-day moving average, you could finally get a run out of this whole formation here in this downward 
uh, uh, downward slope. So keep an eye on that as well. Google, we talked about. I really, really like the stock. I uh, really like the chart on Google. Uh, in case the market turns down, guys, watch Avago. Yeah, if you guys remember, I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you a case study. It's exactly the same thing. Okay, take take a look at this. Right. So this is a this is a chart on Avago. You see it moving up, moving up, moving up. Right, moving up. Blah 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 blah. Okay. So actually, let me let me reverse engineer this. Here's a chart on Amazon. And then we'll get to Avago. Right. So here is a chart on Amazon. Right, moving up, moving up, moving up. Right, holding the five day, holding the five day. You guys remember that pivot? We talked about a couple of days ago. If it loses the five day, it's going to go down to the ten. If it loses the ten day, it's going to go down. Uh, even more, right? So Amazon, right? Slowly but surely, lost the five day, lost the ten day. And if you go to the weekend video, I said there's a shot this thing gets down to the 86 level, 85, 86. Well, that was that was the low of the day. So look at Avago now, right? Look at Avago. So Avago lost the five day, held the ten day. Keep an eye on this thing for tomorrow because if it loses the ten day moving average, this thing could give another move down. So keep an eye. On that as well, uh, AMD, we started seeing some 170, 180 calls uh, coming in. So far, it held the five-day moving average. I want to see if this thing starts reclaiming back to these channels and starts waking up. Uh, Meta continues to be uh, pretty firm, uh, pretty firm indeed. Uh, I, I think it needs probably another one or two days to go side where you start attacking this top of the range, but it definitely looks good uh, as well. And... Um, now look look at snow. You know, look at snow. It's not bad. Again, I'm trying to find names that are coming from the bottom of the channels, not from the top. The top ones you want to leave alone. You see how snow got rejected four days ago, right? You see how it got rejected four days ago on the 34 day EMA? It got rejected again today on the 34 day EMA as well. So I want to watch this thing. If we could reclaim back the 34 day EMA in the next day or so, maybe it could start moving back. Uh, to the 50-day moving average. Tesla continues to be uh, an absolute rock star. But again, just like Amazon, just like Avago, folks, yes, they're grinding. It continues to go higher. But all it needs to do, right? All it needs to do is lose the five-day once, and then you're going to be looking at a, a potential really, really good uh, short. But again, we're not there yet. I just want everybody to be aware uh, the same way Amazon lost the five, the same way Avago lost the five, just because it's Tesla and I love it. And I traded, you know, I traded... Uh, you know, I trade it all the time. Doesn't mean uh, it could lose the five. Doesn't mean it can't lose the five-day moving average uh, and give us a trade back to the downside. Uh, but in all intents and purposes, it continues to needs to be bought on dips, uh, especially into the five-day. You can see here now, three days in a row, right? Came into the five-day bounce. Came into the five-day bounce. Came into the five-day bounce. So you can continue to do that uh, until it loses the five-day. And if it does lose the five-day, then we got a situation on our hands. But ultimately, again, uh, it does look like they're buying every dip. Uh, so far, it's been trading uh, excellent, excellent trader, uh, especially in the last uh, week or so. Uh, you know, I was, again, I'm still curious to see if they try to run it uh, back to the July highs ahead of uh, the robo taxi event. That's it, guys. Everybody, hope is doing well. I hope everybody is happy, healthy, and going in the direction that you, uh, you need to be in your life, in your personal life, in your health journey, and in your trading career. Guys, God bless. I will see you all tomorrow. Take care.